It was during the reign of Jayavarman VII that the Khmer Empire finally reached its high point. He expanded it to its greatest territorial extent and engaged in a building program that yielded numerous temples and works of infrastructure. But this all happened during the end of his life. It wasn't until reaching his late 50s that Jayavarman came to power, and we know very little about the years prior to that. He was born in around 1120, the son of King Dharnendravarman II. He married a strong-minded and devout Buddhist princess called Jayaraja Devi, who would exert an important influence on him both before he came to power and during the early years of his reign. When his father died in 1160, he was away on a military campaign in Champa, and would stay there until news arrived of a palace coup back in Angkor six years later. King Yasuvarma II, a brother or possibly a cousin of Jayavarman, had been deposed and killed by one of his generals. Failing to arrive in time to stop this, Jayavarman spent the next decade patiently waiting as the usurper, known as Tribhuvanaditya, slowly lost control over his country. After 12 years, the time had finally come for Jayavarman to assert his claim. The Cham had invaded, sacking Angkor and murdering the king, and with the country under foreign rule, he began to organize a struggle for independence. In less than five years, the invaders had been driven out, and in 1181, he was crowned king. The military expansion undertaken under Jayavarman VII brought parts of the Malay Peninsula and Burma, as well as Laos and even Champa under Khmer rule. As time went on though, he became more and more interested in building projects, launching a grand program of construction that included both public works and monuments. As a Buddhist, his stated goal was to alleviate the suffering of his people. His own inscriptions say that, he suffered from the illnesses of his subjects more than from his own, and the pain that affected men's bodies was for him a spiritual pain, and thus more piercing. Jayavarman did construct a lot of practical buildings. For example, he built 102 hospitals spread across his lands, and a massive system of highways radiating from the capital, complete with 121 rest houses dispersed at 15 km intervals. He also constructed a large number of temples. The most famous is probably the Bayon, the last state temple to be built at Angkor. It is the only one of its kind to be made primarily as a shrine dedicated to the Buddha as opposed to Hindu deity, and features reliefs depicting scenes of ordinary life in 12th century Cambodia. Surrounding the temple is the new city center of Angkor Thom, originally known as Indra Pata. The temple of Ta Prom was dedicated to his mother in 1186. According to an inscription, it once had 80,000 people assigned to its upkeep, including 18 high priests and 615 female dancers. A temple in honor of his father was also built, called the Preah Khan. Both of them served as Buddhist monasteries and universities, with the latter employing no less than a thousand teachers. A far smaller but nonetheless very beautiful temple was that of Nik Pin, also located at Angkor. It sits on an island in a water reservoir, and consists of various pools representing the elements of water, earth, fire and wind. It was believed that going into these pools balanced the elements within the bather, and thus curing their diseases. All of this was being put up at a furious pace, as can be seen in the often less than perfect craftsmanship that's been employed. Jayavarman was a man in a hurry. He had come to power at nearly the age of 60, and wanted to leave an impressive legacy behind him. Further adding to the urgency of his situation is the theory that he may have suffered from leprosy, and so if his goal was to be accomplished, he would have to utilize time to its fullest. It's also possible that the construction of so many Buddhist-oriented buildings was pushed by Jayaraja Devi, and following her death by her older sister, Indra Devi, who became Jayavarman's second wife. Also a devout Buddhist, she had previously been installed as head professor of an important monastery, where she frequently taught female students. She is described as intelligent and cultivated, and through her role as queen managed to gain a degree of influence over state affairs. In 1218, Jayavarman VII died, having reigned for over 30 years and living to nearly the age of 100. Without a doubt, he had succeeded in creating an impressive legacy and in putting his mark on history.